Hey everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of Whitesnake. Welcome back to the School of Rock. I want to continue on uh, by doing a little bit more rhythm playing with you guys. You know, I don't want to get so obsessed with leads that we lose sight of uh, songs and the big picture in terms of being in a rock band. Uh, so today I thought I'd cover just working with thirds. Now, what the heck are thirds? Okay, well, our whole basic music musical system is based on the major scale, right? Just so today we're going to be working with the key of G. If, if you take there's your major scale, the scale we all grew up listening to and learning our children's songs to, right? So thirds are basically taking the first note and the third note. So there is a third, okay? Now the way this breaks down is if we started from the second note of the major scale, and play it up to the fourth, that is as well, indeed, notes a third apart, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing is walking you through in the key of G, all of those thirds. And they take on different shapes. In general, anytime you have the one fret stretch, that is a major third, okay? What's known as a major third. When you see the two fret stretch, that is a minor third, okay? Just good to know for theory. And there is, in a key, there's seven chords. The one, four, and five chords are major. You guys have probably heard of a one, four, five progression, maybe somewhere. Two, three, and six are minor, and seven is diminished, which is not often used in rock songs. Um, but amazingly, the diminished really is the same when it comes to the third. That only changes with the fifth. The fifth is flatted in a diminished, a triad, okay? So for thirds today, in the key of G, which is incidentally the same as the key of E minor, okay? Those are called relative. E minor would be the relative minor of the key of G. I'm sorry, my dad was a theory music professor. I can't help but uh, get into this stuff with you guys. <laughs> anyway, I just want to walk up on each set of two strings what the thirds are in the key of G slash E minor, okay? So here we go on the low E, getting the second fret. That's actually the seventh chord in the key, the diminished one. And here is G, of course, right? A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor. Now, of course, this would continue up. We're going to try and save room in the magazine and here in the lesson by not just constantly walking up all the way here, right? We could go continue all the way up there to fret 24. Anytime you, you wonder what it is, just think 12 frets higher. You have to always picture up here as a mini neck for those that are new to this. That's the same as the third fret and the fifth and the seventh and the ninth and of course the twelfth up there for me with this twenty-fourth fret. Anyway, so getting back to it, you could always just take it at face value off of these exercises as well. The opening is okay. Now let's head on to the next set of strings, and that's gonna sound like this. And once again. Could continue on up, but we're not going to, okay? Next set of strings. Okay, the next set. These take on a different shape, I should mention, because when you tune the guitar here, you're tuning from the fourth fret, right? So you're tuning, the B string is only a third higher um, instead of a fourth higher. Normally, the, these strings are a fourth apart in terms of the way the guitar is tuned, right? So they take on different shapes because of that tuning. So it's just going to be open. You can hear already that these have a really nice melodic sound to them. You can kind of hear chords. And the reason really is for a first and a third, that really identifies chords as major and minor. Incidentally, it's also if you guys ever want to write harmony solos with your bands, any scale pattern that you would play, the best thing to think is a third away for those that know their modes. and. That's really the primary harmony in our system in terms of uh, you know, rock guitar and what's, what sounds good. So we're working with stuff that's very useful today, I think, in my opinion. We're gonna go on to the next two strings here on the B and the high E and just walk right up. Okay, now, what do you do with these beyond just play them? Um, you know, today, I really wanted to focus on getting you guys some finger picking patterns and focusing on clean. But that's not to say this can't be used with distortion and for heavy metal riffs, it absolutely can. And if you can bear with me showing you a couple of those ideas just here on clean, uh, 
hopefully you can understand. Uh, with you, this isn't necessarily going to be something that's out in the magazine. I just want to give you guys some conceptual stuff. But, um, you know, just droning away on these. If I played... You can kind of hear a, a nice song there. It's great for writing hooks in a song. Right there, it had that kind of E minor uh, to, to C sound or something, you know, if I tried to write some third stuff over that. Okay, now imagine that with distortion. Sorry, I'm on a, a clean channel here at the time being. Uh, but great place to start. You can also slide these around. It's a great thing for lead guitar. Uh, let's just take the, the, the last set here on the high E and B. Okay, if I wanted to climb up. I'm sliding the lowest note to what the next one is and then playing the next note of it. That's really nice because it does kind of work out that you only have a two fret stretch. There's no crazy three fret stretch to go between those two. So you can really just kind of get away with using the same fingering. Okay, so you can invent all kinds of cool lead lines with that. Very melodic sounding. You can also, in certain keys, use the open strings, okay? And I did want to show it to you, obviously, today in a, in a key where all of our open strings are in key, meaning E, A, D, G, B, E are all notes within the G major or E minor scale, okay? So you could also just take, like, you know, uh, a G, G chord. Okay, all I'm doing right there is pulling off the high note of the third playing the low one. Okay, so, you know, have fun with that. Obviously, all my stuff is kind of conceptual with these lessons, so do your own thing with it. Uh, also, you know, this one I'm really going to miss the distortion right now, but you can chug, uh, you know, open low strings and play the thirds above it to create riffs. So. I just kind of went from playing essentially E minor to an A minor, whatever I was doing, I'm not sure, D and G. But if you have those bass notes there, you can hear how melodic these are. They're just great soloing tools that don't necessarily fall into the shred realm. Although again, you can kind of get there, right, with those pull-offs, that kind of turns into a a cool shred thing. Anyway, let's move on to the bulk of why I really want to do these today. I wanted to get you guys some right hand finger picking patterns um, and get into really what I think is one of the best applications of these. Um, and that's kind of moving off of open string patterns with them. Okay, so I want to start out on the G here on the low E. I'm going to pick that with my thumb and I'm going to get the D string here with my index and my middle is going to get the open G's. And you might want to just start there for those that don't do a lot of finger picking. Okay, now I want to start working with the third. So I want to get to that, see how, where that third is in that pattern, right? So now instead of moving just right up, I reversed it to make it a little more melodic. So I'm going to go. I continued up to the third one there. You see that? These two are the index and middle on my right hand are just getting those D and G strings open the whole time. Okay, this stuff obviously sounds great on acoustic guitar as well. 
I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to work a little bit on finger picking with you guys. And those that totally can't stand doing the whole thumb thing, you can absolutely do your pick and then do the hybrid picking thing. So I, I could use my middle and my third to get those open strings. <laughs> works fine. No problem with that. Either way, whatever you guys are comfortable with. The next exercise that I wanted to do is reverse the order of what we're doing with the right hand fingers, okay? And I moved it to the thirds that are happening on the D and G strings and with uh, the high E and the B open here. So very E minor-ish sounding pattern, right? But instead of going like this, which is what the last pattern would have been in terms of the right hand, I want to reverse that. Does that make sense? So I'm going. Okay, the more of these little right hand patterns that you become familiar with, these are incidentally the, what you'll learn right out of the gate when you start classical guitar. Um, which I, you know, did a, a little college for and all that stuff. So it's part of my background. Um, but I think it's no secret we've had a little classical guitar bleeding into our rock world for quite some time. So this certainly won't hurt any of us today, right? Um, anyway, the first five groups that we had worked on just doing the two notes, I want to do something a little different now. Okay, stay with me. <laughs> I want to take the lower note of the third and I want to bump it down by an octave, okay? This is just a really a wonderful songwriting tool in my opinion. It sounds like this coming up. So we're getting the low E open and the G open, the second fret on each. There's the third on the G and the fourth on, or the third on the low E and fourth on the G string rather. I just think these have a great just a great wonderful songwriting tool okay and even better when you start to apply the open strings that are in key in the key of G so the next exercise what I did is I just walked you actually let me walk up these first I think we covered this one here's the next one And then the last one. So anytime I'm in the key of G or E minor, I, I can picture all that stuff as chord options, especially on acoustic or on clean to come up with some cool parts. Okay, so the exercise involving the open strings with that, the first one is gonna be this. Okay. Obviously, you can move it anywhere. It all sounds really nice, right? Having that D string as a pedal tone. Those are called pedal tone licks, by the way. Anytime you're kind of repeating, going back to the same note, that's referred to as a pedal tone lick. Again, the theory coming out of me, I, I apologize. You could really just practice the entire scale. So the next exercise is just a pattern working off of Same thing, okay? And these are just thirds. It's the same thing we were doing before, but boy, that octave spread sure makes it, gives it a nice chord sound, doesn't it? Okay, obviously very cool for coming up with clean parts, acoustic parts. Um, Let's take a look at the last exercise here. I wanted to work with this group that, that goes up and get you one last right hand one, okay? So we've obviously been working with that last one was using the thumb and middle. 
and the first finger getting the open string, right? This I just want to work on raking through the four notes. So I want to go thumb, index, middle, third. Okay. I should be playing, sorry. <laughs> Spacey this morning. Anyway, let's walk down. So. could reverse it or speed it up. Okay, here's reversing it. Jump around. Anyway, I really hope that you guys don't necessarily just look at this as like exactly what's written is exactly what I need to play. The idea of these lessons to have you guys find your own stuff, you know, I'm really hoping that someday someone will write me and say, you know what, man, that song, I wrote that intro part that was based off of one of your lessons on Guitar World. Nothing would ever make me happier than to hear that. I think that'd be a really great thing. Um, anyway, hopefully you guys will find something really cool with these thirds in the key of G uh, slash E minor of course, and uh, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for tuning in here to Guitar World.